Let's take a look at the syllabus for Enterprise and Cloud Computing, that's CSIS 630 for Fall 2019. My name is Dr. Anthony Varghese, and you can call me Dr. Varghese, or Professor Varghese, or Tony. My phone number is 715-425-3335. Um, my office, uh, if you've never been there, you need to go to South Hall. It's 127C. My email is anthony.vargis at uwrf.edu. But if you're trying to get a hold of me, what I would recommend doing is going to the inbox in Canvas, and you can click on this link, go.uwrf.edu slash learn, and um, use the inbox. Once you log into Canvas, you'll see the inbox. I get notifications when you send me an email, and I check it regularly outside of the office hours. That is. Monday through Wednesday, Monday to and Monday and Wednesday, 10:15 to 1 p.m. Wednesdays, 2 to 4:45 p.m. And then after that, I'll be in the Hudson Center. I'll be somewhere, maybe in transition. Um, and so, if you send me um, a message in the inbox, uh, I'll try to respond as soon as possible during the business hours of 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. But the only thing is I may be in meetings and it might take me a few hours to get a response back. So please plan accordingly. The classroom for this uh, uh, class is in the Hudson Center, room 207. We meet Wednesdays from 6 to just about 9 o'clock. Okay, as far as prerequisites, for this course, you are supposed to be admitted to either the accelerated master's program or the usual Master of Science in Computer Science program. And you're supposed to be familiar with uh, a programming language, and Python is what we typically prefer, but um, you c other programming languages are good too. You should be familiar with algorithms, data structures, networking, Operating system internals are always good to know. And then a Unix-like or Unix command line is something that we always assume. You can type in commands and look at the outputs, things like that. Um, also, we assume that you have some understanding of the University of Wisconsin River Falls Canvas course management system. And if you're not so uh, familiar with this, uh, you definitely there are um, tutorials and things organized by our uh, technology services. Okay, so this course is three credits. There's one main textbook that is uh, the Enterprise Cloud by, believe it or not, James Bond, published by O'Reilly Press. And then we'll also have lots of lab, materia uh, lab materials and other materials on Canvas. As far as software, you can use Microsoft Word or LibreOffice, either one is fine. And later on we'll see, or actually pretty soon we'll see how to use VirtualBox to set up Linux virtual machines. And you would want a virtual machine with Python. You could potentially also use um, uh, Ubuntu running on Windows directly. Um, not sure, not certain of the, its quality, but it used to be not that great, and I've heard it's better now. We will use, we'll make use of um, commercial cloud services. We'll look at a couple of vendors at least, uh, Google and Amazon Web Services. Um, we'll more about that later. We'll have lecture notes and labs available on Canvas. That's our course management system. So the mode of instruction will mainly be face-to-face -face meetings on Wednesday evenings. And also we will use some flipped classroom work, which is where I have lectures recorded just like this. And then I ask you to watch it before you come to class so that in the class, during class time, we can work on uh, homework, things like that. So that is something that a lot, on, a lot more instructors are using because just because it 
seems to work a lot better than the traditional lecture style classes. Okay. So what is this course all about? This course provides an advanced level coverage of concepts in cloud computing and the application of these concepts in the setting of an enterprise. Students will learn about the rationale for virtualization and the differences between software as a service, platform as a service, inf or, and infrastructure as a service, and other cloud services. So these are abbreviated SAAS, PAAS, and IAAS, and there's a lot more of these. And the, these are the main ones. Students will gain practice solving typical enterprise problems using these cloud computing technologies. The course will cover enterprise information technology requirements and strategies for solving problems at the enterprise level. Topics include service-oriented architecture, system administration and total cost of ownership, virtualization, and cloud computing. As far as objectives for this course, learning objectives, by the end of this course you should be able to understand theoretical and practical aspects of virtualization of computers and networks, apply cloud computing techniques to problems faced in enterprises, and understand and apply best practices in cloud service deployment. So there's not much of a course calendar provided in uh, this syllabus document because it's all in Canvas. You'll see a detailed course calendar in Canvas. Okay, what are expectations? Uh, we assume that you're going to attend classes. That's the best way to succeed in this course. And so attendance and participation in class discussion is highly recommended. It only helps you. So you definitely want to watch any videos that are assigned for a particular day in advance. And then during class, I assume that you've watched the videos. So. Since each class meeting goes over a week's worth of material, you may be disadvantaged by missing even a single class. You don't want to do that. It's about a week's worth if you miss a single class. If you have to miss a future class, notify the instructor beforehand and it is your responsibility to get caught up. It's up to you to get caught up if you do miss a class. So check on Canvas for the course and make sure to ask your fellow students for notes, things like that. See what you, how you can get caught up if you do miss a class. Missing the first class, however, can cause the registrar's office to drop you from the course if there are people waiting for to sign up for it. As far as preparation, you are expected to come to class having read the lab, completed any pre-labs, for example, if there's a lab pretty much every week for the first nine weeks, and then you should be fully prepared to start the lab activities. And so the best way to do that is to read through it and uh, also watch the videos. The workload outside of class hours in general for every hour of class time, you're expected to spend at least three hours outside of class. That's a minimum requirement, minimum expectation. Resources, as far as resources, what you'll need for, for this course, you definitely need a working computer with Microsoft Word or LibreOffice, which is free to write the lab reports. And then we will use a site, a particular site called draw.io, which is free, totally free, to create diagrams. And then also VirtualBox, also free to run our virtual machines. When you do the labs, all, all work should be your own and some of the labs will involve um, you working in teams, so it must be you know, work done by the, the two of you or three of you, however many people are in the teams. Use your own words when writing reports, copying and pasting from other sources. Definitely not okay. Copying and pasting is considered to be plagiarism and can result in, get, in you getting a zero. We wouldn't want you to miss out on scores for these labs, so best not to do that. Also late submissions are not accepted unless, and this is um, important, unless you have approval from the instructor 24 hours before the deadline. 
And even if you have approval to submit it late, penalties will apply. And so generally speaking, if you're late, you know, the, any submission is just not going to be accepted. As far as exams and quizzes, there are 10 in-class quizzes. We do have a scheduled final exam period, which is the Wednesday um, of de uh, December 18th from 6 to 8 p.m. Um, we'll see if we actually need to use this or if um, you know, it's possible that uh, we might have presentations instead. But this is the scheduled time, Wednesday, December 18th, 6 to 8 p.m. at the Hudson Center. Some important dates to keep in mind. The last date to drop a class without a W on your transcript is September 24th. And the last day to drop before a late drop form is necessary is November 12th. If we look at the components of this course, uh, there are nine labs, which will account for 45% of, of the grade for this class. Quizzes are a quarter. And then it's going to be 10 discussions, which will account for about 10%. And then the remaining is the final project. I use a standard graduate level uh, grading system. That is, if you have between 94 and 100, you get an A. 90 to less than 94 is A minus. And then there are B plus, B, B minus. And then hopefully none of you get anything like a C or an F. OK. So remember, late work, you do have to, you can only submit it if you get prior instructor approval. And even if you do get approval, if it's less than a week, you still get a penalty of 10% per day. And then that only goes for one week. And then after one week, it's there is um, you don't get credit for it. You can still submit it. Important contacts. If you want to talk to someone else about this course, definitely you want to get a hold of um, either Ms. Leanne Van Allen, who is the director of the MSCS program in South Hall, second floor, or the head of the department is Dr. Hussein Najafi, and he's also in South Hall. Okay, so let's take a look at the course content. So the main topics in the course are going to be virtualization. We'll get started on that right away. And then we'll look at IT service architecture and compare on-premise uh, deployment versus cloud deployment. Then we look at uh, software as a service, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, and actually a whole lot more cloud services. Hopefully we'll get a chance to look at virtual networks and then compute clusters I'd like to get a chance to do that and also containers these are becoming very important in the DevOps world um, I'll skip this part about the learning outcomes but the main thing is you want to be able to develop and deploy cloud-based solutions and look at some of the aspects of distributed mobile computing and this the stuff that you learn in this course is important for distributed mobile computing okay so Hopefully you're aware of some of the mission statements of the college and the learning outcomes and also the university as a whole. And if you're not sure about this, definitely use this link to take a look. Okay, so if you have um, any questions about ability uh, to do the work in this course, definitely you know take a look at uh, these rights and accommodations you do have accommodations if you, if you have trouble with uh, accessing this course okay as far as attendance like we talked about you are responsible for getting caught up if you miss one or more classes and hopefully you don't miss any so this you might not have seen in other classes but in this course you should have phones turned off during class or placed on vibrate mode so that um, if you have family responsibilities that you have to respond to something. Laptops, generally speaking, should be put away unless um, 
the content is you know d uh, directly related to the class and it's and I okay it so it definitely you should ask the instructor that is me and talking on the phones and texting surfing the web are just not acceptable that's especially at the grad level okay so this syllabus might change and can, I might probably just tell you verbally that yeah this so this has changed slightly I don't, most of the time it's not anything to worry about if there is something important I will definitely tell you let you know the university does have a policy regarding academic honesty and discipline and that these will be strictly enforced in this course so students who violate academic integrity in any manner including plagiarism cheating or other forms of dishonesty will fail that lab or assignment or quiz or exam and may go through further disciplinary procedures and unfortunately this has happened it's very rare but we hope it doesn't we all hope that it never happens so plagiarism if you're not sure about it plagiarism refers to the use of materials from books notes and other sources in showing up in your submitted work without credit with, that is without giving credit to who actually came up with that material um, so if it shows up in your work as if it was your own work that's plagiarism cheating refers to securing or giving help in a test to other people doesn't matter who um, and things like unauthorized copying of tests so other forms of dishonesty would be taking a test in place of another student, things like that. So if you have questions about that, definitely ask and I'll, I can make this clear. Okay, well, hope uh, this semester goes smoothly and everything works out very well. And let me know if you have any questions at all.